Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the new lecture on medicinal chemistry. In this video lecture, I am going to discuss with you about the mechanism of action of sulfonamide and the various reactions that are involved. Mechanism of action of sulfonamide. Sulfonamide are basically a class of drug that acts as antibacterial. Clear? For sulfonamide, they are going to act on the analog of the para amino benzoic acid because their structure is related with the para amino benzoic acid that's why they are known as their structural analog and that's why they are going to competitively inhibit one of the enzyme that is the dihydropteroid synthetase and due to this they are they will ultimately prevent the addition of PABA to the pteridine diphosphate and uh, block the net pathway that is the biosynthesis of the folate coenzyme and folate coenzyme we know that are required for the essential growth and cell division of the bacterial cell sulfonamide are basically bacteriostatic in their mechanism of action means they do not have any damage or sidal effect on the bacterial cell they must be maintained at their minimum effective concentration Folate coenzyme. Folate coenzyme are basically biosynthesized from the bio dietary product inside the human and the other animal cell. Means they come from as a dietary source. But bacteria and protozoa synthesize inside the body from the PAPA and the pteridine diphosphate. Trimethoproline is one of the drugs that acts as the inhibitor for the dihydrofolate reductase. So basically, these folate coenzymes are involved in the pathway of, for the formation of the dihydrofolate and tetrahydrofolate, which will ultimately result in the formation of folic acid, which is required for the synthesis of the different nitrogenous bases, DNA and RNA. So once this fo these folate coenzyme are inhibited, entire pathway will be disturbed. And one, the drug that is going to inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase is the trimethoprin. And these folate coenzyme are generally synthesized inside the bacteria and protozoa. So this is the pathway for the sulfonamide action in their metabolism. Like para-aminobenzoic acid and pteridine diphosphate will combine and by the action of one of enzyme which uh, I will discuss later on in this slide uh, and they will get converted into the dihydropteroic acid and the next step this dihydropteroic acid will be converted into the dihydrofolic acid and then it will get converted into tetrahydrofolic acid and once tetrahydrofolic acid will be formed, it will act as a precursor for the synthesis of the folate coenzyme thymidine synthesis are the nitrogenous bases that are essential for the DNA synthesis and the other purine nitrogenous bases. So the different enzymes are involved in this entire pathway like in the very first step that is the combination of para benzoic acid and pteridine diphosphate to convert into the dihydropteroic acid in this step the dihydropteroid synthetase enzyme is involved the sulfonamide drug will act on this step means it will inhibit the dihydropteroid synthetase enzyme at this side and ultimately it will block the synthesis of dihydropteroic acid and this entire pathway will not going to happen and in this way it is going to act as the uh, resistant or uh, sorry what we say it will going to inhibit the uh, growth of the bacterial cell the next enzyme in the next step is the dihydrofolate synthetase and that is going to convert this dihydropteroic acid into dihydrofolic acid. In the next step, uh, dihydrofolate reductase enzyme will act to convert DHF2 uh, that is the dihydrofolic acid to, to into tetrahydrofolic acid. So the trimethoprene is a class of drug that is going to inhibit this uh, step that is the conversion of dry hydrofolic acid into tetrahydrofolic acid and once the trimethoprene it blocks this step ultimately folic acid or the thymidine enzyme synthesis will not going to happen and the growth of bacterial cell and DNA synthesis will not occur so in this way these two different drugs sulfonamide and trimethoprene x as the inhibitor for the 
बैक्टीरियल डीएनए सिंथेसिस पादा दैट इज द पेरामाइनोबेंजोइक एसिड वी नो दैट इट इज द एसेंशियल न्यूट्रिएन फॉर द मोस्ट ऑफ द बैक्टीरिया एंड इट एक्स एज द विटामिन और व्हाट वी से ग्रोथ फैक्टर इन द बैक्टीरियल सेल बट दिस पेरामाइनोबेंजोइक एसिड इज नॉट एसेंशियल टू द ह्यूमन हेल्थ एंड देयरफॉर दैट्स व्हाई इट इज नॉट कैरेक्टराइज एज अ ऑफिशियल विटामिन बट इट comes as an essential dietary source uh, and uh, pava is an intermediate in the bacterial cell for the folate synthesis and uh, in the next preceding steps uh, like the synthesis of thymidine and the dna bases so this is the folic acid chemical structure you may observe that folic acid we have already observed that it is the essential for the cell to synthesize the nucleic acid nucleic acid bases that are the dna rna bases especially the thymidine base in this chemical structure you may observe that this region uh, is the para amino benzoic acid derivative because the folic acid structure is basically consist of the three different region one is the pyridine ring second one is the para amino benzoic acid this is a benzene ring this is para position amino if you observe that it is being further substituted at this side clear and this region is basically the carboxylic acid functional group which is further being substituted with the glutamic acid Clear. So this is the chemical structure of folic acid that acts as the dietary source, uh, or uh, sorry, what we say, the essential growth factor in the bacterial cell. And in the absence of this, the bacteria even cannot survive because uh, for their uh, particular uh, proper growth uh, and uh, division, this folic acid is required. So the sulfonamide uh, that acts as antibacterial or trimethoprin will ultimately act as the inhibitor for this folate synthesis. now let's discuss the reaction pathway for the sulfonamide so for this the pyridine diphosphate will combine with the para amino benzoic acid this is the chemical structure of pyridine diphosphate and this the two cyclic ring are present and with the four nitrogen atom are present that's why it is known as the pyridine beside this it has the phosphate group at this side it this will combine with the para amino benzoic acid it has the amino functional group at the pair para position and the carboxylic acid functional group this is the chemical structure for para amino benzoic acid they both will combine by the and uh, the enzyme that is going to accelerate this reaction is the dihydropteroid synthetase and ultimately the net product form will be the dihydropteroic acid clear so this uh, this happen because the para amino benzoic acid is going to attack or what we say substitute at this site of the phosphate and uh, in the net result this dihydropteroic acid synthesis will occur in the next step this dihydropteroic acid will combine with the l glutamic acid l glutamic acid will going to be combined at this side of the dihydropteroic acid and ultimately it will get converted into the dihydrofolate or what we say dihydrofolic acid clear the enzyme that is going to accelerate this reaction is the dihydrofolate synthetase in the next step the reduction of dihydrofolate will occur and it will get converted into the tetrahydrofolic acid and uh, the enzyme that is involved in this step is the dihydrofolate reductase there is an other drug that acts as antibacterial is going to inhibit this step where that is the trimethoprin clear so trimethoprin will block this step and ultimately the tetrahydrofolate synthesis will not going to occur so if in normal pathway if for suppose tetrahydrofolate synthesis is going to occur ultimately it will act as a precursor or what we say will be utilized in the synthesis of the folic acid purine bases that are the especially thymidine bases will ultimately useful for the dna synthesis and the acts as a growth factor in the bacterial cell clear so this ultimately entire pathway is useful for the bacterial cell but once the two drugs that are the sulfonamide and trimethoprin are given this entire pathway will be blocked and the normal survival of bacterial cell will not going to be happen so sulfonamide when given in the individual therapy it will only block this step and will act as a bacteriostatic drug but in the combination therapy with the sulfamethoxazole or with the other drug uh, it uh, like the trimethoprin 
it will act as the bactericidal agent because now in its pathway the two different step of are being inhibited one was inhibited by the sulfonamide that is the diet of synthetase and ultimately the next step was inhibited by the trimethoprene so ultimately the entire pathway will be blocked at the two different side and that's why the net effect of the drug will be the bactericidal As far as the spectrum of activity of sulfonamide are concerned, they are basically the broad spectrum but bacteriostatic agent. Once given in the individual therapy, they have the bacteriostatic property. They, they are broad spectrum because they are effective against wide range of the bacterial species including gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. The example are given here clear so sulfonamide when given as a single therapy they are acting as the bacteriostatic but once they are going to in combination with the trimethoprene or the other combination like one of the anti-malarial drug then ultimately they will act as the what bacteriostatic agent so many of the strain of the microbial organism get the resistant against the sulfonamide and drugs so that's why they are going to be replaced by the other antibacterial agent or the other antibiotic sulfonamide are particularly useful in the urinary tract infection because of their higher excretion fraction through the kidneys